HTML templates instead of reactivity. I hope, come on, HTMX, come on, HTMX. This better be an HTMX article. In this post, I'll try to convince you that the amount of complexity you bring into a project to synchronize your application state with what a user sees on screen is not worth it. Reactivity is not worth it. It's not worth it to use weird abstractions like JSX or other languages which produce HTML or JS. Bringing in build systems, package managers with tons of dependencies and other types of complexity like virtual DOM just to build a front end of your application is also not worth it. Worth it. I like where this is going. RxJS. <laughs> We're not talking about RxJS, okay? I like where this is going because this has been a huge complaint of mine, which is you have to replicate server and client-side state, and they try to stay in sync with each other. You try to do all these actions just to update small bits of your of your system. And then you add in third-party state management, which then creates even more state, which is things like Redux. It's wild. It is wild. What's the selling point of modern frameworks? Did someone say a hype train? Is there a hype train going on? Hey, thanks for the hype train, level two. Okay, guys, that doesn't seem like a level 55 pirate software hype train, so offended. What's the selling point of modern frameworks? Let's take a look at React, for example. My button, const set, handle click, let's go. All right, all right, all right. Oh, sh shut up with your golden kappas. Actually, from Pirate Software. The idea uh, here is that you don't need to directly update the value of the button when the value of count is being changed. I understand that real examples are way more complex, and while this specific example may not appear particularly impressive, it serves as a demonstration of the framework's functionality. I assume everybody understands this. Easy, peasy, pumpkin, seedsy. Yeah, okay. I mean, you could have inlined this thing little arrow function, called it a day, but whatever. You get the idea. I also understand the same example in other frameworks like Svelte looks less weird. My point here that we still can re reduce the amount of complexity. First, let's try vanilla JS, attempt one. Okay, okay, I'm excited, I'm excited. I think the example above can be rewritten in plain JS much easier. Okay, let's see it. Handle click, get attribute data count, times one. Interesting, I don't understand the times one. Cast it to an int. Cool. Okay. 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 Const b uh, b equals Okay. I didn't know about the times one. I've always done the old uh, I've always done that one. I've never done that. Interesting. Okay, anyways. Plus one, okay. A set attribute, data count, okay. Inner, uh, clicked this many times, okay. Okay, we see it. We have the button right here, okay. When I write uh, when I write these words, I can already hear voices of people complaining about how this is inefficient, how it's silly to update the DOM directly, and how insane uh, to keep the application state right within the attributes of the elements. It's funny, because I don't really have an application state here. All I have is the DOM that contains useful information, which I can extract and use. And yes, for large projects, the solution above may not be the best approach, because large applications actually means you have some state. So let's talk about application state. Okay, so I, li I like the build-up, because in some sense, I totally get what they're trying to show you here. This versus this. This also happens to require about 500 KB of JavaScript to actually run. This is it, right? It's like nothing. The state is kept in a lot of stuff right here. This scales not much different than this, right? This, this almost doesn't, this scales about the same, close. It's like slightly better, but it's about the same problem. All right, application state must be global. The idea is that we attach certain objects to specific elements or components cause us a lot of troubles. For some reason, we decided that global objects are evil. However, I don't see any real objective or reasons to think like that, okay? Let them cook. Let them cook, okay, people? Just let them cook for a second. Sure, there may be name collisions, but those issues are easily detectable and avoidable simply by naming things in a more concrete and distinctive way. All right, he's cooking. He's cooking. Global state Redux mentioned. Redux, global state. Okay, for some reason, it's okay to have a DOM, which is a global within window. It's okay to have global structures like session storage and local storage and many other things within window, but it's not okay to separate uh, to separate global state of your application. To me, it seems inconsistent and quite harmful. Okay, interesting, interesting take. Const state equals this. Yeah, this is, a, so for those that don't know, this is a global state. For those that haven't programmed JavaScript in a long time outside, you know, like outside, of 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 just the current world you may have forgot that when you do a script 
whatever variables you declare, those are like globals. Dog, those are on the window object. You know that? That's kind of crazy, huh? Just is. Just is. It is the way it is. I know. Whoa. Nope. Yeah, it is. I know. It's kind of weird. They're the deep state. They're literally the deep state. Uh, as you can see, it's a bit uh, better because we don't need the data count attribute. And in this case, we do use the application state. And yes, it's global. As I told you, what if we add many more elements that we must visualize data? What if we cannot attach event handlers in such a way to where we can easily access our elements? I hear you. I have a solution. Template. Ooh, template people. Ooh, is, are we getting into web components? So what about templates? There is such a thing in HTML like template elements. Uh, the interesting thing about this element is that it's not rendered on the page load, but we can instantiate it later in JavaScript code. Just imagine that you can use such an element to render your view each time the application state changes. The only problem is that there is no built-in solution about how you can map your object to the template and also, there is no default mechanism which allow you to release that template into DOM. But let's admit, it's not something impossible to implement, okay? Teach me. I, I don't know what's happening here. I don't... I I didn't quite understand that last little bit, but let's see what they're trying to say here. Are we getting to HTMAX yet? I think we're almost to HTMAX. All right, using template, attempt three. Imagine you could do something like this right in HTML. All right, state, template, map to template. Okay, I think I see what they're trying to say. Okay, okay, I think I, I, think I kind of see it. I think I kind of see what's happening here. Data object name. So you use the global name to attach to state. Remember, that's global. And then in here, your data text is hydrated with state.count. Imagine that uh, we had a function map to template, template state, that we can map state to the template and inject the whole content of the template directly into the HTML. In the end, it would look like this. I don't know how I feel about this. I'm not loving this idea here. I'm not loving this idea. Okay, we gotta let them cook. Let them cook. Just observers in JS? Yeah, is this just observers? Let's just let them cook. As you can see, we still have the possibility to release the initial template by using data object name. We can define a variable name that we can reference in the HTML content inside the template. Template. Attribute data text uh, indicates the inner text of the element once the value of the attribute is processed. To be more specific about how we're going to render our template, let's improve the solution. Okay, all right, we got the state, we got this, we got the handle of the click. Template is reusable. State into box. Oh man, this is slowly becoming, this is slowly becoming HTMX. Count times, okay, okay. This is like client side HTMX. Okay, you're losing me, you are losing me. This reusable business, I'm not I'm not a big fan of. I'm also not a big fan of this because this requires stringified variables. And like, this is not, you're not getting any sort of type checking there, right? I'm not a big fan of that. By using data insert into, we can specify the element selector where our template will be rendered. In this case, we insert it inside of element box. So we imagine we click the button three times. This is how the HTML would look like. Yes. Okay, if we used data append to, okay, this is this is HTMX at this point. Our code would look like this. Okay, yes. This is like client-side HTMX. This is literally client-side HTMX using data data handlers. Or we can use data data prepend to box and our code would look like this. Okay, yep, 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 yep. It's silly, sure, but it shows the power of such mechanisms. You can already imagine how much easier it is to share state between many elements. Sure, button, text area, template, we have a template in a template? Okay, now you lost me. Once you have a once you have a template in a baby template, list to iterate. State array? I don't know about this at all. I, I, I don't think I like this, okay? I'm just throwing this out here. I don't like this. As you can see, we can even potentially use such things as for each templates, which can render nested structures. In the end, we would see something like this. Yep, and that's because you did a for each via a template right here. A for each in the template. Okay, yep. Yeah, I, 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 I'm not loving this idea. Okay, this is like client-side HTMX and also handlebars. He is low-key inventing a new framework. Yes, this is a framework about to happen. Stroke evidence, uh, stroke avoided. So close, dude, I was so close. Oh, when we see the attribute data object name, we can appreciate the fact that I, I'm, I'm not appreciating right now that this object can come from anywhere. It truly makes our template decoupled from the, any data source. This is true reusable components. Yes, you need to call rendering manually via map to template, but you can gain a lot in return. You can come back to good old days and simply enjoy writing HTML. There's no need for strange state management libraries built upon a false sense of how application states should be stored. I mean, I like that. I mean, I like some of the conclusions here, okay? This guy's cooking, okay? I don't know if we should let bro cook, but he's cooking, 
okay? I am not going to dive into how map to template is implemented, but it is right here in case you want to see. All I'm trying to say is that there are more elegant ways to manage your state, and you can come up with your own. I mean, he came up with his own. You know what? So I will applaud him for trying. Can we all agree to that? You should try to make your own ideas and see how they feel, right? I know this is this is the beginning of another framework. This is just tiny framework. That's all it is. To me, it seems like it'd be a lot better to use something more like web components at this point, honestly. There's lit components. There's lit HTML. To me, it just seems like there's a lot more you could do in that than whatever this is. This is, this is, this is unique, okay? It's unique. You could just use HMAX. This literally, you could use HMAX instead. Conclusion. You can give me many arguments on why such approach sucks. Like, for example, you can say that manipulating DOM directly is slow. It's not slow. Whoever says this, this is an old idea. The the reason why, like, the, the virtual DOM was meant to minimize the amount of DOM manipulations. And it's because the DOM was extremely slow. It's not It's not even a thing anymore. The more precisely you can manipulate the DOM, the obvious better it is, right? Only then to turn around and use a library which calculates a diff between the DOM and virtual DOM and does those direct manipulations anyways. I apologize, but I find it difficult to take such arguments serious anymore. Okay, fair. That's a fair take. That's a fair take. C++ generally is usually faster than JavaScript. So doing all the work, doing a virtual DOM to a DOM, it's kind of an antiquated idea of just bad browser implementations at one point. At the very least, I hope you understand the importance of trying to achieve good results with basic technologies like HTML and JS before diving into modern frameworks. I don't think I got that from this article, but you can do quite a bit. I mean, at the end of the day, what he's built over here is pretty impressive. Okay, I think it's super cool. I love, I love the idea of trying to build something different, but I don't think this is for me. Good idea, bad example. I'm on that team. You know what I mean? I'm on that team that I, I was hoping, I, I was hoping for something slightly different. We got this in the end. I'm going to accept it. We let bro cook and we got templates. The for each definitely left something to be desired here. No HTMX. Oh, I love HTMX. There's no HTMX in this article. I love HTMX. This ain't it. HTMX is like the inversion of this. Why are you still storing all that state on the, on the, on the client? Like you only state stored on the client should be for client side only things. And so client side only operations tend to be fairly small. And if they're fairly small, you don't need just the world's largest library to manage state. This guy is just five years away from Jay, D uh, J Jay Diesel. He's about five, five years away from Jay Diesel. Don't make so much sense. Just don't make so much sense. Hey, the name. I'm happy you're proposing something different. I love that. Okay, I love that you recognize the problem of state and the client. But your solution is to just have the same state on the client. I feel I feel like there's something better. And you're close. You're almost there. Keep going. A gen.